Phil, you uh, wanted to make sure we talked about a couple of human perception issues here, which uh, which are pretty important when talking about uh, how TVs are made and how they work and what are the limitations yes. that we need to be involved, we need to be conscious of when thinking about televisions? Um, yes. So uh, a lot of times people think that uh, like a big buzzword that I hear is pixel by pixel, con pixel by pixel contrast, because each pixel of a of, of a, um, uh, emiss a emissive display mm -hmm. um, is self illuminated. So, right. so like theoretically, an yeah, like an OLED or a plasma. And when you measure it and you measure one pixel next to another one next to one, one could be zero and one could be who knows how bright. Mm -hmm. And um, and that is pixel by pixel contrast. It measures really good, but then you have to look at what is called what perceived contrast, what you actually see. And what ends up happening is the uh, the human eye um, can only me can only perceive a certain level of contrast, and eventually you reach a certain point where adding more zones or pixel by pixel contrast, it becomes difficult for you to see. Um, uh, and and that is called that is because of what it's called the point spread function of the human eye. If you want to go on Wikipedia and and research it, but it, it's about basically the um, as as light goes into your eye, past your, the lens in your eye, touch your optical nerve, it kind of scatters, and you see a little bit of halo. Mm, and, even, and that so becomes, that's interesting because we talk about haloing a lot in in uh, LCD TVs with with uh, uh, direct backlighting. But mm -hmm. actually, some of that might very well be in your eye itself. We have a graphic to show what, what we're talking about here, number five. Let's take a look exactly. at that. Exactly. So, so like I said, and you can actually do this. Like, um, um, and the other thing that's interesting is it, the effect becomes more dramatic as the luminances increase, as it gets, things get brighter. Because um, So if you walk up to, a, um, to a, uh, an OLED or an, a plasma and you look at it, like within your, an inch from it, you can see that one pixel is off and one pixel is on. If I back up and I play something like we were doing it before, people were seeing the Sony logo on these on the Sony OLED in the display, and they said, it looks like it's blooming. And it's like, no, it's not blooming. It's just that OLEDs are starting to reach brightnesses and luminance levels that you're getting starting to see the effect of this. You never really saw it at 100 nits because 100 nits wasn't bright enough. Mm, now we're talking mm. 400, 500, 600, who knows, 1,000. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, now you're starting to see that. And that's something that LCDs have always had. Now, let's be honest. A, a, you, um, how much of some of that, a lot of the bloom that's in a, a normal LCD TV has to do with the fact that you know the backlight is always on and you can't close it all the way. Or if you, if you have um, a limited amount of zones or segments, you see a little bit of where... Um, a little bit of haloing around the display. But eventually, we're going to reach a critical mass when it comes to how many zones or segments are required. And you will be, it'll, it's, it's difficult, if not impossible, to differentiate when you're sitting on axis between the LCD and the, o and the OLED. I think we, you came in the black box last year when we were showing the prototype. One mm -hmm. and we were doing that demonstration, people, and they were surprised that it looked, it looked like an OLED because there was so many, there were so many zones in the proto, or so many individual segments of control in the in the OLED. I mean, in our in our uh, backlight master drive prototype, that it was difficult for you to perceive a difference. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about more about that in a little while, but I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that that there is a limitation, especially as we get brighter in the human visual system that can cause some problems that might be attributed to, oh, well, that display is blooming. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's in yeah. your eye. Yeah. Now, let me give you an approving demo that we, that we did at the show this year. Um, we had our crystal LED integrated structure. You know, Cletus is what they, used, what they were calling it. We're gonna, now, yeah, we're going to talk about when, Cletus a little later, Cletus, too. 99% of that display is black at all times. But when you look at it, that's not what you see. So if you were so if we were so sensitive to pixel by pixel contrast, you'd be able to tell when you're sitting tw 12 feet or 13 feet from a 32 foot by nine foot display that 99 percent of it was off. So, mm -hmm. but you couldn't, and you had to get up what it within a couple of inches before you noticed that. Yeah. So, so that's just a I mean, real even quick that, example. You, you you were very kind and let me get near the screen because you had it roped off and. You, most people couldn't do that, but I thank you for letting me do that. And I'm, I mean, I got right up there 
And, and even then, it was very hard to see that <laughs> the actual light-emitting part of each pixel was 1%. Of the of the area around it, and ninety nine percent of the area was black, and uh, even that was and even brain, that close. It was hard to see. And your brain fills in the rest. I mean, your eyes, your eyes, and your brain fill in the rest. Isn't so that you, amazing? So that's a so that's just a quick example of maybe pixel by pixel. Um, it has OLEDs have a lot of benefits, but it may not just be because of pixel by pixel contrast. 